Hey y'all, this is Mimi with my co-host JB, and this is Spooks and Crimes. Today we will be telling you about William Billy Mansfield Jr. And because most of these crimes happened in the state of Florida, I'm going to give you a few details and facts about the state of Florida. First, Florida was discovered in 1513. The original name was La Florida, meaning the land of flowers. It has over 0.21 million residents and third most populated state. Now back to the crimes of William Billy Mansfield Jr. Billy Jr. was born to a child molester father in 1956 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He was the eldest of five children. Billy Jr. was convicted of killing five women in 1982. They aged from the age of 15 to 29 years old. He killed four in Florida and one in California. The young women in Florida, Billy Jr. would kidnap, bound, gag them, and bring them back to his home. Billy Jr. would pass these young women around between himself, his father, and his brother Gary, which is so fucked up. Like, yeah. who does that? These women went through some fucked up shit before they ended up getting murdered, and I totally agree with that. Okay, so 15-year-old Elaine Louise Zager? Ziegler. 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 Ah. Was his first known victim. She was from Warren, Ohio, and was vacationing at a campground in Brooksville, Florida with her family, which is creepy as fuck, because I know exactly where Brooksville, Florida is. On December 31st, 1975, Elaine went to take a shower and just disappeared. Oh my god, could you imagine, like, just going to take a shower and we're coming back? <laughs> she had multiple penetrating wounds to her head, which, ow, because do you know how much force it would take to even do any damage to the body, but let alone the skull? And it kind of says wounds look like she got stabbed, like, repeatedly. Multiple times. That's some strength right there to be able to just stab somebody in the damn school. Her body was discovered March 25th, 1981, underneath plastic water pipes and electrical wiring to the Manfield's well pump. On April 26, 1980, 21-year-old Sandra Jean Graham was at Pam's Liquor Lounge in Tampa. We all know about Tampa. She disappeared just after midnight Sunday, April 27th, 1980, from the bar. They said Sandra walked outside to talk with a so-called biker. She was believed to be strangled with an electrical wire. Sandra was discovered April 7th, 1981. Later in 1980, Billy and his brother, Gary, fled to California because Billy had a warrant. The brothers were reportedly living in... Camp, near a campground near Santa Cruz, California. Billy's next victim was a 29-year-old mother of three, Renee Saley. Witnesses reported they saw Billy and Renee leaving a bar together on December 6, 1980. Authorities said that he raped and strangled Renee with a black cord. The autopsy determined that the cord was pulled so tight it was practically embedded into her neck. Oh my God, ow. He left her partially undressed body in a water-filled drainage ditch in Watts Watsonville, California. December 7th, 1980, she was discovered along the Buena Vista, Buena Vista Road by a passing motorist. Could you imagine being the one that had to find the body? I'd, I'd be fucked up, I think. I, yeah, I would have to go see counseling or something because I'm like, oh my god, I've got a dumb body. <laughs> By the time California investigators linked Renee's murder to Billy Jr., Billy and Gary fled. Three days after Renee's body was discovered, Billy and Gary were arrested in Nevada on suspicion of Renee's murder. Gary was charged as an, as an accessory for helping Billy flee. Gary agreed to cooperate, cooperate with the authorities, and the charges were dropped against him. That's fucked up, bro. How that, how's, how's that going to be your blood, you snitch? <laughs> stitches get stitches and end up in ditches like uh, little fuck. bitches <laughs> he didn't snitch he's just a cold motherfucker like he's wrong 
While Renee's death was being investigated in California, authorities in Hernando County, Florida, were discovering bodies at Billy's parents' home over the next month. Oh, shit. Billy Jr. buried the bodies nearby because he wanted them close. What kind of sick person are you that you want dead bodies that you murder to be close to you? And what I found, like, yeah, because he admitted that, I think, in court or something like that. That that's why he buried him. He buried Ew. him in the, um on the his parents' properties. So it was like a psychological he, he wanted, um, he wanted pleasure just, to him. Just to know if, like they were always back there because some of them were only like less than twenty feet um from the trailer or mobile home. That's gross. The first body was discovered on March seventeenth, nineteen eighty one. They were identified women's bones <clears throat> with the skull fracture. The second one was discovered March 25th, 1981, and it was the 15-year-old of Elaine Ziegler. She was found wrapped in a blanket and in the fetal position. Okay, so the 15-year-old Elaine, she was the one that went missing in 1975, and they found her in 1981. So that, could you imagine being like her family of any kind? <clears throat> and just knowing, like, your 15-year-old went to go take a shower at a campground and just disappeared, and then all of a sudden, like, she's gone for, like, They searched years. for her. Like, they, in, um, when she disappeared, they searched for her. That's so sad. Yeah, because it was almost six years before they even knew what happened. Before they even could even think of, ugh, that's... Okay, the third one was discovered April 3rd, 1981, and she was another identified female. They believed she was somewhere between 16 and 18 years old. But they couldn't determine the cause of death. That's even worse. Like, like, as, like me as a mom, even though it's like it's something tragic like that happens, you still want to know, like, how for your child, how they, how they went. I don't want to know the details, but I want to know, like, were they like you know strangled or you know did they go fast did they suffer i want to know things like that because that's just my babies like i feel for their hearts <laughs> <laughs> on april 7 1981 21 year old sandra graham was the fourth person discovered on the property as of 2020 the second still remained unidentified. No, the the the, uh, the two. The two still remain unidentified. Yeah, the two. Yeah, even um, so after all these years, they still don't know who they are, which is just horrible. That there's two people out there that there's no names to them. Yeah, that's that's really freaking sad. Um, on July twenty first, nineteen eighty one, California begins the trial for Renee's murder. On August 10th, it was declared a mistrial because the jurors could not all agree on a verdict. Wow. Yeah, it was. What the fuck? How not? Like, because <laughs> they already don't, by this time, they already had him, like, is this a first murder case? This is. This is, oh, okay. this is only, because this is in California, so this has nothing to do with Florida. It is only about Renee. Oh, okay, okay. Um, on February 23rd, 1982, Billy was convicted of first degree murder. And that's, yes. February 7th, 1982. Sorry, guys, let me pack track. Step back. February 7th, 1982, California begins its second trial. This is the second trial for Renee. Because the okay. first one ended with the mistrial. He was tried again. And that's when they found um, him. That's when he was convicted, convicted of first degree murder on February 23rd, 1982. On April 6th, he was sentenced to 25 years to life for the murder of Renee Saline. Following his conviction of California, he was extradited yep. to Florida and stood trial in the other four murders. Prosecutors were originally pursuing the death penalty in Florida, but he pled guilty in exchange for four life sentences that would run. Concurrently. Concur concurrently with the one in California. That's sick. Like, I'm sorry. I don't understand how if you, if they have proof that you murdered somebody, how is it okay that you can get a deal to, to make it less for you? Like, that makes no sense to me. Like, um, according to the judge, I believe it was all the evidence was circumstantial. 
yeah but just any murder cases like it's so fucked up that you can get a deal and get away without getting murdered yourself because you're too scared to get the electric chair or well, whatever he, it is he was originally going to plead not guilty until they were put in death the death penalty yeah and that's right when there he to why death. give him why give him a deal though if you have facts and proof that he killed somebody but there again, everybody has their own different views and opinions on the death penalty and stuff like that. So, I mean, I guess it's a different situations. Um, anyway, so Billy had been denied parole four times since his first hearing in 1996. I was six years old. What? Because of the way Billy Jr. committed his crimes, the parole board felt satisfied in denying him parole for an additional 10 years. Mm. Okay, in 2012, he was once again denied parole. He His next eligibility parole hearing will be in 2022. Oh my God, that's next year. What the fuck? Oh, they don't even know. <laughs> in case, in his case, will be reviewed every 10 years and he can continue to be denied and die in prison. I no comment on that. He is currently serving his time at California Healthcare Facility in Stockton. So, yeah, that was a little short story on Billy Jr. Mansfield. We thought we would cover this one because it happened right here in our state. And because of just last year of 2020, they found new evidence against him. And this happened, started in the 70s. So, um... They found new evidence against him because his brother Gary decided to snitch once again because he got busted for a drug house. Why not bring your brother down with you, right? All right, well, that's the end of that one. And then we are going to give you two little stories about two different crimes that happened. One in Florida, one in California. One in Florida, one in California. And... So, yeah, that was the story on William Billy Mansfield Jr. Um, but because it was kind of short, and we're still new at this, so bear with us, we're trying. Um, we're going to give you two little stories about um, arrests that happened in Florida and then arrests that happened in California. We're going to try to do these at least once or twice a week so that way you just have something else besides you know the serial killers and paranormals and stuff like that and basically because we cover you know murders which is the serial killers and low-key murders from small towns stuff like that not things that everybody sees nationwide um we also do paranormal and crimes, so the crime stories that we will be giving you sometimes will be funny, sometimes like, what the fuck, you know, crazy, makes you question people's state of mind, different things like that. So let's go ahead and get into the first one. This one happened to happen in the state of Florida. Okay, so in 2018, an intoxicated 61. One year old William Rugger, Florida man, called 911 to report his wife as a black widow spider. <laughs> it requested she be baker acted. Police showed up and noticed that he appeared to be highly intoxicated. Like, no shit. <laughs> and the cops informed him that 911 was for emergencies only before they left. Less than two hours later, Mr. Ruger decided he needed to call a second time. After the second 911 call, Mr. Ruger was arrested and charged with the misuse of the wireless 911 system. He wasn't in jail very long for this. <laughs> Could you imagine? Like, 61 years old. Oh, that's so sad. What if, like, he was going through, like, some, like, mental thing? You know what I mean? Like, I think he was just drunk. Oh, my God. That's even worse. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he was just drunk. I don't know why he thought his wife was a black little spider, but... Like, earlier, when you when you made the comment, you were like, yeah, he thinks his wife... All I heard was he thinks his wife is a black widow spider. But I was thinking, like, 
where she was like, you know, the black, they call the women who kill their husbands oh. black widows. That's what I was thinking. So when I started reading this, I'm like, oh, hell no, this motherfucker really thinks he loves a spider. Oh, this is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now here's the second one from California. A 31-year-old man arrested for stealing a 21-year-old lemur from... <laughs> lemur? Lemur. <laughs> a lemur from San Francisco. <laughs> so soon. Last year was told to stay away from the zoo. Last October, they discovered the male. <laughs> was it lemur? Lemur? Lemur. Lemur Missy. Oh my god, he went back! So, so, so the, the guy broke in, stole the lemur. They found the lemur the next day. Lemur's totally okay. Not half of the lemur. He got arrested, but now he has to. He was told to stay away from the zoo. <laughs> like, who the fuck wants to bring it to <laughs> to the zoo and steal a lemur? If I'm gonna break it to the zoo. I'm gonna steal some like exotic animal. I think. Like... Aren't those like the emu type ones though? They're not like you know how you get the emu, and then you get the one that looks just like an emu. I have never seen a, a, a oh, lemur, a lemur, a lemur in my life. <laughs> I've never heard of this before. I'm sorry, guys. So this is this he's got. Oh, it's like a little monkey thing. Oh my god, I would totally go into a zoo and steal one too. Like that thing that's like, that's like, I like to move oh, it. I like to move it, move it yeah. in a Madagascar. Okay, okay. I would totally steal one. Just saying. So <laughs> they found I won't do it because I got kids. I can't go to jail. But <laughs> they found evidence of a forced entry to the lemur's enclosure. They spotted them the next day, and the lemur was okay, thank God, because I hate stories with animals being hurt in them. Um, who the fuck just raised into a lemur enclosure? I agree! <laughs> okay, so we decided that we're going to give you guys one more. This one is coming from the state of Louisiana. Okay, so... On December 28, 2019, police had taken custody of a Louisiana, Louisiana man. Okay, my bad. Let's start all over on that. This one comes from the state of Louisiana. On December 28, 2019, police had taken Justin Savoy, a Louisiana, a Louisiana man, into custody. They responded to a suspicious activity in a home he was occupying with a female acquaintance. Cops discovered that Justin passed a handgun, marijuana, and drug paraphernalia. Sorry, I pronounced that wrong. During the search, other firearms were also discovered in his truck. As Justin was beginning being strict search, strict search. I am so sorry, guys. <laughs> After his arrest, the police reportedly found concealed weapons in his butt. So oh my god! <laughs> a pistol that was more than four inches long and a 2.5 inch barrel. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't. Ow! I don't, I don't even Ow! I don't even understand why he put that up his butt. Out of all things, you decide to put that up your butt. But they already had all that other stuff on him, so I don't even know. I don't, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. He received three years probation in order to serve 90 days in jail. Wow, he only, because you know he got time served before he even went to trial or, you know, court yeah. or whatever so he literally was in there for maybe a month and got three years probation how 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 
do you think it's okay to shove something that big up your booty? <laughs> I'll take the three years probation. I would be embarrassed. <laughs> I just think, like, that, you know, his his mugshot, you know, is is out there now. So people know exactly who and what he did. Oh, my God. Okay, so part of his probation is he is buried from owning any from owning or possessing any firearms, visiting bars or lounges, including an ex excessive use of alcohol or illegal drugs. Oh, so he can't even, like, go to a regular club or no, a strip club, anything. If there's alcohol, anything involved, yeah. he's not allowed to be there. Yeah, well, there. damn, I don't even blame him. Like, you're just gonna, like, shove stuff up your booty and then all of a sudden you're gonna be... <laughs> Why? <laughs> Okay, guys, so this is it for this episode, and as I said before, this is our very first episode, so just stick with us. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Spooks and Crime, and email us at spooksandcrime at yahoo.com. We hope that you enjoyed us so far. Bye! Hey guys, this is Mimi with my co-host JB, and this is Spooks and Crime.